you're looking for tips on how to use the new Airtable automations feature, then you have come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the biggest differences between Airtable automations and Zapier or Integromat automation. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, I'm Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, swing by our website. I will include a link below and you can also check out our free Airtable crash course that will help you get up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. But let's just jump into the heart of this video and it's all about Airtable automations and how they're different from previous automations that we run through third-party softwares like Zapier or Integromat. So let's just jump right into my screen and start with the first one. The first piece being the triggers inside of the automation. So if you're new to automation, a trigger is the scenario that sets the automation into motion. So for example, we might say that we have a specific view and we might call this view here the new opportunity check. So real, real quick rewind here, what I've done is I've created a very basic CRM that contains opportunities. And so these opportunities are linked over to a contact and each opportunity is in a different stage, right? And each contact can have multiple opportunities because as we do business and we, you know, make new contacts, of course, we do, you know, repeat business with certain folks. And so we want that relationship. Over on our contacts table, I only have myself as a test guinea pig here, but we track the company and the email and things like that, right? And then, of course, this will link to all of the different opportunities that this contact is associated with. So by building an automation, we can then have a view that is only looking at where this checked box is in fact checked. So right here we have a checkbox called create new op. And basically the rules that we set forth are, well, when this box is checked, then we want the automation to trigger. And then of course, after the automation is run, we want that box to get unchecked. Now this is the biggest difference between the native Zapier uh, integration with Airtable and Airtable's new automations feature that are internal to the software. Because with Zapier, when a record shows up in a view, even if it shows up multiple times in a view, if it's in the view, then taken out and then brought back in, still Zapier can only trigger one automation for that record. And this is very different from the way Airtable automations works because the functionality that you probably want is for this box every time it's checked to perform an automation. So previously we had to use even, you know, extra third party software adding on top of that Zapier integration. But now with Airtable automations, we can do all of this inside of the system. So let me show you what this automation looks like really quickly. I've got this opportunity or this create new opportunity automation. So when a record enters this view, that is the new opportunity checked view, then the automation will trigger. That's what this first rule is. Now the second part says, well then the second step of this is that we're going to then create a record. We're going to create a new record in the opportunities table and we're going to link it to the contacts that we found in the first step, the trigger. And then we're also going to automatically assign the stage of that new opportunity as stage one. So quick pause, let's pop over here again. You see that we have these different stages available to us as we track the opportunity over time. So we're saying, hey, as soon as that opportunity is created, create it with stage one as the status. And then the final step of this automation is when we will go back into our, uh, our first record. So we're going back into the record that started it all and we are unchecking the box. And so this little zero right here that's what that's telling us. It's, it's saying that we're turning that checked box into a non-checked box. So really quickly, now that this automation has been explained and you can see that it's turned on here in the upper corner, let's go ahead and check a box and watch what happens. So over here again, we're going to create that opportunity by checking this box. And then we see that a couple of things happened. There was a, a little uh, outline here and then the box was unchecked. The outline signifies that a new opportunity was created and added. So there's that new opportunity in stage one. And then of course the box was unchecked. 
So if we wanted to, you know, a day later or a minute later, create another opportunity, we can again check that box and we see that those new opportunities are then created as well. So this is really great, especially because we are using that single select field. So we can then leverage the Kanban view and other things to track those opportunities over time. But the real, the real power of this again is all in the trigger because the trigger in Zapier would not be able to recognize that rechecked box and trigger an automation again. So that's a big difference between the way Airtable and Zapier would run an automation. Now that takes us to the second big difference between Airtable automations and automating using Zapier. So Zapier, you can check out their pricing plan here and see that they charge basically by the task. So they have various packages and each package has a certain amount of tasks that it allows you to perform. Now Zapier calls a task at any step that is automated inside of an automation, excluding the trigger. So again, back to automation lingo, we have the trigger that sets it into motion and then multiple action steps can occur after that trigger. So every single action step, every time one of those runs in Zapier, that is effectively drawing against your total number of tasks for the month. And if you go over that certain amount of tasks, then you are getting to the point where you start paying more. So in this example, let's say you were on the starter plan for Zapier, you'd be paying $20 a month, you'd get 750 tasks. As soon as you use those tasks, you then can, you know, pay per task after that. And even at the cost of, you know, half a penny or whatever the rate is, it can start to add up. Now, that is very different from the way that Airtable automations are tracking the, uh, the automation that you're performing inside of the software. Now, flipping over to Airtable support documents, you see that they set us up with runs. So rather than counting every single task, it's how many times an automation runs. So you can actually run 50,000 automations and each of those automations can have multiple tasks. So you can see that if you're building you know, automation inside of Airtable automations, you're getting a lot more use out of it. Just imagine if you had an automation that ran 10,000 times and it had two action steps. So that would count as 20,000 tasks using Zapier's way of accounting, right? Because each action step counts as a task every time it runs. So if it ran 10,000 times and it had two steps, 20,000. Well, Airtable would only count that as 10,000 runs and you get up to 50,000 runs every month if you're on the pro plan. So this is another big advantage to why you might choose to use Airtable automations over Zapier. You're gonna get a lot more mileage out of the same amount of, you know, uh, the same pricing plan really. Now that really takes us to our third and final point and it has to do with connectivity. So Zapier at present connects to thousands of different apps. They're, they boast that they literally have connected to over 2,000 different apps online. And of course, Airtable's automations are very, very new and don't have the same robust connectivity that Zapier does. So this is definitely a feather in the cap for Zapier. If we look at the different steps that we can pull out for an Airtable automation, and we can just set up a new one here, we only get the ability to connect to two out, uh, external softwares at this point. We can talk to Microsoft Teams or we can talk to Slack. Otherwise, we're looking at building automations that are living more or less inside of Airtable itself. So the, you know, the summary here is Airtable automations are cheaper to use and faster, and they also can trigger more easily than Zapier automations. However, if you're looking to build things with a lot of external software, Zapier is still king. Zapier is looking, you know, like the best bet if you're trying to connect a lot of different software that's external. But if you have a lot of processes that are needing to be automated inside of your database, Airtable Automations is an outstanding tool and one that you should probably explore. As always, I hope you found that to be very helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing on by our website and check out all the resources we've put together. We have a free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. And we also offer some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online group coaching programs and courses. And for the very advanced needs, we can build a bespoke 
project for you from scratch. So swing on by and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank <laughs> you.